So a question has come up quite a few times is uh, how to deal with this sort of panel, the one that you see in the uh, Revit 2010 hero screen is this sort of poofy little triangular panel and we can go s walk through a couple little tutorials on how to get there. This is the final product that I've got and you know it's not exactly what you would see in that hero image. Uh, it's pretty close. Um, it's a little bit crisper here in the corners. It flattens out nicely and pillowy at the top. There's a couple different ways to do it. I'm just going to show you the one that I prefer. So the first thing you need to do is open up a new curtain panel family. Here we go. And you're going to select the grid lines and you're going to change it to triangle flat. We used to have a triangle, or we still have a triangle that had four points and I've added a new one that's just three points. And I'm going to make this actually the aspect ratio that gets you closer to an equilateral triangle, which uh, it's basically one to seven. So I'm just going to do the 17 and you get something that's a little bit closer to what you're going to be shooting for. And now the first thing to do is to find a midpoint of it. So I'm going to go with a 3, 3D snapping line. And if I put a point here in the middle, the middle turns out to basically be uh, two-thirds of the way through. So if I do it at point six 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 six. That gets you pretty much at the middle right there. Now, the real fast and dirty way to do this one, uh, which isn't my favorite, but I'm just going to show it to you anyway, is to do a reference line that comes up out of that point that you just put in the middle. So I'm going to set my work plane to that point, and I'm going to just draw a line up like that. And then I'm going to do some more reference lines that just go like that. Oops. A, just change that to a reference line. And I'm going to do one more reference line over here. So I'm going to pick that one, this one, and that one, and create form. And that gets me sort of something roughly like what I'm shooting for. And I can make adjustments to that to, you know, make it more to what I want it to be. Um, you know, I can lower this line down so that it's not quite so puffy like that. And mess around with the placement of this to get the bump where I want it. I don't particularly like this one because it is a little uneven and it, it doesn't have the sort of crispness that uh, that the ones in the splash screen have. So there's a more intensive way of doing it, and I'm going to elaborate on that one right now. To do that, we still can use some of the stuff that we already just set up here. So I'm just going to get rid of a few of these pieces. And this one too. Now, the first thing is to put a bunch of points on the work planes of these adaptive points. And this is something I do a lot to just set up 3D rigs. So you see I just put those points on these adaptive points. And if I select these guys, you'll see I have six things selected over here. Adaptive points three and reference points. So I want the reference points. And I'm going to make them all a parameter value offset. Call it H. So that is basically, that's the offset parameter, which basically says how far it is off the work plane that I put it on. So I have this parameter here, H. I'm going to just make it 10, something to get it up there. You see now all those guys just popped up to 10 feet. What I'm going to do is, I'm building up a little three-dimensional rig, basically, to <coughs> build my pillow on. So I'm going to thread these guys together so they basically are a reproduction of the planes that they're hosted on these guys down here and I'm going to do exactly the same thing that we've got down on the lower part and I'm going to host a reference line here and here and this guy's also going to get the same parameter value that the one below did which is point six 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 
So now you see we have this rig where I've got a center line that goes straight up from the bottom. And this one's always going to project sort of straight out from the panel that it's hosted in. Now if I connect these guys, and while we're doing this, it's, it's important to actually do these, whoops, how did I lose my line? It's important to do these as lines drawn in the same direction each time. That is, I'm starting at the bottom and I'm going up. That just makes um, the parameter values on these lines all be the same. So if I put a point here and I call it, you know, point one, it's going to be the same thing over here and here. And you'll see that in a minute, why that's important. And so I'm going to do a triangle here. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to select each one of those lines, each one of those points, sorry. And I'm going to give them a value so I can control where they are and so that they're all even. I'm going to call that uh, outside. And so you'll see that we're also going to do an inside triangle. And those guys all just leveled out because they all just have the same parameter value. Now I'm going to do one more of these triangles and it's going to get a little tricky to see here. I'm going to go here to the midpoint of this line. And again, I'm going from the outside in so that all these lines have the same parameterization. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So now I've got this outside triangle and this inside sort of pyramid. And I'm going to do one more set of ref, ref lines here. One, two, three, like that. And I'm going to select each one of these guys again. And these guys are all going to get a parameter too, which is going to be, we'll do this one as inside. And they all snap too. And now I can actually make my geometry. So I've got that one, that one, and this base geometry here. And that looks like a total mess right now, but once I hit create form, you can see that now we've got our panel. Ta-da! And you can fine tune it a little bit by um, just moving around these points, get it quite how you want it. I think I found before it was 77 by 12 was good. Let's just try that. Again, you can you can mess around with this and get it right. Um, also, because these are going to be relatively smaller panels, I'm going to adjust the height of this a little bit. Just make it a one foot offset. So I'm adjusting the H, so that's going to bring the whole rig down. See, it just flattens that whole thing out. It would have been kind of a hassle to sort of build it that way. Um, but I'm also going to I'm going to change a couple of pieces of scale here. I'm going to make this a whole lot smaller. One foot by one foot seven inches. So we're back to sort of a scale that we can see. Um, and I'm going to load that into the project. Now here I've got what we were looking at before. And I'm just going to remove both of these panels for regeneration purposes. I'm going to set them all to, tri oops, not triangle bent. I want triangle flat. And one of the other things that I did was um, I hooked up these parameters to all be laid out at uh, maximum spacing. And I also parameterized the distance that each one of these grids is spaced at, so that if we look at it, they're all set up so that the V grid drives the distance of the U grid, and that this basically keeps it so that you always have an equilateral triangle. The The ratio is it's a little bit more than 1.7, it's basically the square root of 3, but 1.7 works pretty nicely for this. So that whenever I change the size of one grid, it also changes the other side. So I don't have to think about what two times the square root of three is every time I do it. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so that we can regenerate it faster. 
And so let's see, I'm going to do four, and then this one's going to update to be 1.7 times. And there, I've got a bigger grid, just so I can experiment a little bit more with my panel. So that panel that I just added is, I think it's this one, family three. So I just pause the video for a second for that to regenerate. It takes a little while. You can see that all my panels have just populated in there. Pretty good. If I change my scale down, I'll get it to uh, you know, sort of be something that's a little bit closer to this green. Now, you might say, well, that's all well and good. But in the hero image, we've got both this solid paneling and we've got this checkerboard alternation. Well, we can reuse our panel to do that too. So in order to do that, what we're going to want to use is the triangle checkerboard flat. So I'm just going to pattern the surface here first, just so we can visualize what that's going to look like. Um, and then I'm going to make a new, new curtain panel pattern based. I'm going to be basically doing the same thing that we did before, except Oh no, actually this is going to be pretty different than what we did before. This is going to be a whole lot faster. So I've got my panel that is based on the checkerboard patterning. I'm going to go back into the panel that I already made, this guy, which as you recall is made on triangle flat. And I'm going to load this into my new curtain panel here. So you can see over here in the project browser you've got curtain panel family three, which is the one that I just made. I'm going to drag that out. So now I've got it on my tooltip and I can place it like an adaptive component. Bing, bing, bing. So now I've got one curtain panel nested into another curtain panel. So what this is going to do is that now I've got a solid triangle, a solid pattern triangle hosted into a checkerboard pattern. So if I load this back in, to my model, what I can do is that now this guy can see now I have family four, which is the one I just edited under the triangle checkerboard family. And I'm just going to turn that one on family four. And I'm going to pause while it re regenerates. So there we go. So if I tab into these guys, you'll see This one is family three, uh, sorry, let's see, family three. You can see that there. And if I tab into this guy, it's family. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is the same family, just one nested into another in order to get that effect so that you can basically reuse all the work that you did making this solid one to make the triangle, to make the uh, checkerboard one as well. And so now after I've done sort of a low resolution version of it, I can go back and change the the grain of it to be better. And I'm going to pause again to let this regenerate. And shazam, ta-da, we've got it. And it looks, um, you know, it's pretty close. It's probably close enough for what most folks would want to do with this. And we've got our checkerboard. There we've got our solid panel. So I hope that that helps people figure out something that has been a recurrent question. And uh, please send along your questions and hopefully uh, this will work out for you. Thanks a lot.